He knows that gentleness is strong. Force will give in to persuasion. It's in his voice, in every song, in his way of conversation. Some men believe that they must fight, that violence is the way to win. They use their fists to prove their might. He uses love from deep within. In days gone by, on fiery steeds, knights would ride forth to battle wrong. He doesn't fight. He has no need. He has the power of his song. He doesn't have to play the part of errant knight with shiny sword. He shares the music in his heart to aid his quest to serve the Lord. He's learned to turn the other cheek, to treat a slap as a caress. He knows that God will bless the meek. He has the gift of gentleness, the awesome strength of gentleness by Hazel. Uh, well, uh, from my parents, people would know that I'm a senior. And uh, however, um, and they know that I would deserve any discounts <laughs> for that. However, most people would guess me to be younger than I really am. Because uh, I'm approaching 84 this year. But... Uh, as far as my personality, I, a, a lady, a good friend of mine, wrote a poem about me recently, and she called it uh, the, the Gentleman. And uh, because she says I'm very gentle, but she says there's strength in that. So I thought that was an interesting way. And I, I, I can see it be, being true that I try to be strong in, my, in a quiet, gentle way. Support for Sharing Life comes from APEC Marketing. To consult their services, go to apecmarketing.com. That's A-P-I-C marketing.com. By email contact asha at apecmarketing.com. That's A-S-H-A at apecmarketing.com APEC Marketing your resource for digital marketing web and app development tools Hey there I am a great grandma I have been around a long time I have many stories I have been there and done that and enjoyed myself along the way. I have stories about myself, my family, and their families too. The joys, challenges, struggles, and triumphs that we all have experienced through our lives are a bond that we have in common with every generation sharing the commonalities of our life experiences brings us closer to a generation that is open to hearing from us. Hey, you out there, get ready. Join me and many others on this show. Our host is John Knox. Greetings, I am John Knox. This is the Their Time Podcast. This is episode number five. This episode is called Ron Wilson, the Quintessential Octarian. Today on the Their Time Podcast, we are learning about Ron Wilson, who is an appreciated person in my life. Ron is a diligent gentleman who is an encourager of other seniors. He is also an inspiring teacher to many. Listen to this episode to discover his methods so that you too may have a positive impact on your community. This episode has three chapters. The first chapter is about Ron's present life. The second chapter is about Ron's New Year's goals and mine too. However, you will have to stick around to hear what the third chapter is about. 
So, this is chapter one. Ron, can you take a moment to tell us how you spend your time? Well, I spend uh, quite a bit of my time on um, three, three kinds of activities. I, first of all, I'm a chaplain at Eagle Terrace Nursing Home and part-time down uh, in Elginwood in Richmond Hill. I also do musical ministry also to elderly people in retirement homes. Uh, th- three of those uh, I visit pretty well every month. And then I do some um, uh, teaching of Hebrew at a fellowship down in Toronto. So I am either going and coming or I'm preparing for, uh, that takes quite a bit of time to prepare these lessons and the PowerPoints when I do that. So besides that, I have family connections around Toronto. I have children, grandchildren, now two great-grandchildren. And so I try to see those. I don't see them as often as I'd like, but I try to fit them in as as I can. Um, Well, I would say that in my music and in my teaching of Hebrew, when I feel I'm being effective and the people are learning or benefiting from my my leadership, then I I get a real sense of satisfaction in that. I really enjoy um, uh, doing the music, for instance, when I see the people responding, singing along, enjoying the songs, or when I'm teaching Hebrew and I'm teaching a point and they, they're getting it and they're really appreciating the some of the insights that come along with that. Uh, I would say that's the part of my life that I uh, is, is the most pleasant and enjoyable. did some volunteer work in Bradford. Oh, I started back in the early 2000s, I guess, uh, maybe 15 years ago or more, uh, helping with music at um, Bradford Valley Long-Term Care. Then I met Tom who you, McCormick, who you know very well. And uh, first of all, I got me involved with doing some more work in other places and then helping him down in Elginwood in Richmond Hill. So one thing led to another, and uh, I was involved with retirement homes and so on. So um, I would say around the year, year 2003 or four, I started uh, my first playing in a long-term care home. Chapter 2 is a good one. New Year's goals may be difficult to pursue and mostly forgotten now that it is January the 28th. But, dear listener, don't give up. Improvement is around the corner. You can do it. Now, Ron, how do you feel about New Year's resolutions? I think it's a good idea at New Year's, uh, not just New Year's at other times, but to take stock of where I could be uh, more effective things that could should be better in my life, and then try to do that. And I've I made some decisions uh, this New Year's, but I don't make a big thing of be, being New Year's particularly. But it's a good time to check and make sure is there something I need to work on or try and do better. Right. How about what themes are you working on in your life now? Hmm. Um. Well, number one, I would like to be more effective uh, in what I do, especially where in spiritual things. When I'm uh, visiting people in in the long-term care or when I'm doing uh, work in retirement homes, I'd like to be, uh, I feel I can be more effective in uh, communicating and being a spiritual blessing to the people. It's a little hard to put into a few words exactly uh, the whole scope of being more effective, but uh, I've been praying about how I could be used of God in a, in, a, in, a, in a better way when I'm doing my music and teaching. So this year I have a couple goals that I'm focusing on. Okay, I'd like to hear them. <laughs> I'm working on my meditative life, my planning, and, my, and food. I've got to eat properly. And fun. It's got to be enjoyable. Very good. Well, I wish you all the best in uh, <laughs> achieving your goals there. Uh, by the way, I have some other um, areas I'm working on, too. Um, Physique? 
you know, you look pretty good, but I'm just wondering, is it... Um, well, uh, I did, I did uh, think of my physical health. I could do... I've been increasing my physical exercises uh, daily, doing a little more of that sort of thing. My, my diet is pretty good, but I could improve that somewhat. Um, but I, and I think that I need to be a little more physically active. I used to walk a lot, and I've really slowed down. I need to, to get back to doing a little more, uh, more uh, uh, physical activity. Do you have any malls to walk in out here? Uh, there are new market uh, is one for instance people walk around that I do have opportunity I just need to take the opportunity when I go to Toronto for instance and I'm uh, I could always walk up the stairs rather than take the escalator and that sort of thing uh, I, I could just uh, also time sometimes I could I go early and uh, uh, and w rather than take the last uh, whether bus or streetcar or something I might walk a couple of miles uh, for you know, for, for exercise rather than take the TTC. Mm, that could be a long walk. Well, I used to walk a lot longer than that. I, that there was a day, a little a few years ago now, when uh, I could walk 10, 15 miles. But uh, but um, I need to um, repair a couple of bridges in my family relationships. And then there's a, fr a very good friend. Or, her name is Hazel. I've got to figure out a little bit of where we're going in our relationship and uh, what, what God wants of that. And uh, also, in my relationship with the church group in in Toronto that I've been going to, I, I just I, I need to know how uh, I've, I guess be be more fully committed and to be in, involved in all, in ways other ways with that group. I I believe I should be, and I plan to be to pull away from my membership and activity in the church that I've been going to up here in in Nobleton. So I've got to work at that and make sure that's clear and that I don't uh, hurt any feeling people's feelings unnecessarily. But I need to uh, be clear about my my loyalty and so on with the group in Toronto. So, here it is, the third chapter. In this chapter, we are introducing Ron's book to you. For many years, Ron has been working steadily in his life to accomplish things. After retiring, he even went as far as to earn a master's degree and then even had his eyes set on a PhD, but instead spent that time making a book that would be of encouragement to you and me, the everyday reader. So... Your book was published in 2014. That part, uh, yeah, that's right, yes. Uh, it's called Following Jesus, Our Cruciform Example. Well, here we are. But, well, actually, I started uh, writing the, that kind of material way back in but 2004 and five. Uh, then I was working on a master's thesis at the uh, Canada Christian College, so this became basically the same material of working as on a thesis, and that was uh, finished in 2008. And then I was heading towards 2011 to do a doctoral thesis, much on the same material, but going more deeply into it. I never finished it as a, a doctoral thesis, Instead, I decided to write this book for more for uh, the average Christian rather than uh, emphasizing theology and so on. And some people still find it rather theological in parts. It may be a little bit heavy, but it was published in um, in 2014. So that, but it was a st different stages and different um, different other uh, things that were published in the not published commercially, but uh, like the. the th that the thesis and so on were all steps in that direction. You were 70 years old when you started writing your book. Oh, I guess I must have been around that time. Yes, okay. So is that your first book to write? Well, not really. It's the first book that I've had published. Um, I did a, uh, a, my diary to Kenya years ago, trip, and I... I just had a photocopy at Staples, a few copies, and 
That, then I did my Diary to Israel, uh, which was 1990, and that I, uh, I think I must have uh, produced about a hundred copies or so of that, and um, passed it around. But th but this was the first book that uh, I actually had published by a publisher. Right. Wow. Can you tell me? I want to. I want to ask you about about your your publishing methods. So like, how did you get it published? Uh, there's a self publishing. Um, Outfit. It's uh, it's part of Amazon actually, and it gives you all the help, and it's it's free. Um, they get a certain percentage of uh, of any royalties afterwards, but or you can pay to get some of the things done. But I did I did them myself. You can, like, for instance, if you want them to design the cover, or uh, there's other uh, ways of improving it that that they will that you can pay for extras but the basic publishing did not cost me anything well interesting so do you remember the name of the website in general like yeah it's called create space the, uh, the is um, and I say that the, I think it's createspace.com but I'm not sure of the exact wording of that right and that's just like an Amazon website right yeah and so the books uh, then are published and sold by Amazon, and they keep a certain amount of the uh, of any sales, and then I get also a percentage. Would you think of making it an audio book, like reading it? Uh, I've never really considered that. I don't know how many people would be interested in. Or you would be, and listening to the whole thing being read to them. Uh, I'm not. I, I'm still old-fashioned. I like reading a paper book, uh, even Kindle and stuff. Uh, read it on the computer is is still reading print. But I, an audio book. There are other companies that do that? But I was very happy with the way it worked, and uh, I found it quite easy to follow, and uh, to. Uh, the instructions to me were very, were quite clear. Uh, I have uh, the one part that I I kept, could have done more as far as advertising or uh, trying to get my book uh, known and spread out, spread over. But I really don't know how to do that much, and and uh, I could have asked Amazon to do that. So I can't comment on how successful. It has, it has been in that respect. Well, the the fir, the primary theme that was suggested by the uh, in the title really, it's following Jesus is um, it's showing that the cross and his suffering and death are part of his example to us. In Christian circles, there's not much emphasis on this part of his death. They're more concerned with teaching the it has an atonement dying for our sins which is very very important but the teaching of that his behavior his attitudes his actions uh, in his suffering and death are like a paradigm an example to us to exemplify so that's one of the main things and then what I did was I took it in uh, I took examples from my uh, visits to Israel and showed how some people in Israel follow this, in particular the Jews loving Arabs and Arabs loving Jews, in their total forgiveness and loving enemies, they are what I've termed cruciform in following Jesus. And I suggest in the book that that really is the answer, not just for peace in the Middle East, but for, uh, for all of us, uh, we need to be followers of Jesus in that regard, uh, not, not just uh, uh, following him in a physical way, but to really adopt his attitudes, his actions that were particularly uh, shown at the, at the time of his suffering and death. This episode is being published in memory of my dad and to celebrate the birthday of a dear friend.
This episode was originally published on January 28, 2018 on the Their Time podcast. You have been listening to Sharing Life. To contact me, use my email address, sharinglifestudios at gmail.com. Also, I have an independent board who reviews all decisions made concerning these broadcasts. Thank you for being a listener.